it's that time again where I open all of the boxes that have been sent to me in the past month in one big haul. So welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews Unboxing. Have you noticed, however, before we start opening the parcels, that the nights have been getting darker? There's a bit of a chill in the air. Almost a spooky chill. It's definitely getting into autumn. And in fact, there is a thunderstorm raging outside at the moment. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. The Center for Disease Control is reporting the outbreak of a new virus strain that is causing the infected to become extremely vicious and to exhibit cannibalistic tendencies. Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews Unboxing. The Halloween edition. <laughs> Do you know I can't see a thing inside this mask? Let's get those lights back on. Like it's Halloween this month, so I thought I'd do a very special, spookier version of the unboxing. And I thought, as a plague doctor, it would be quite fitting to these current times. So for the rest of this unboxing, I'm going to be wearing this mask. No, I definitely won't be, because it smells like aniseed, and it also fogs up ridiculously. So that can stay down. But I shouldn't be wearing my Plague Doctor's outfit. So, <laughs> if you're watching this on Halloween, happy Halloween. And if you're watching it in October, happy October. Let's get cracking with the first parcel, shall we? Now, I didn't really think about this. If someone knocks at the door, it's going to be quite unusual. So, first up today, we have got... Slitinto. Slitinto. It gets worse if you say it like that. 10 watt wireless charger. It would appear like we've got some kind of very industrial looking wireless charger. That's quite an industrial device. Okay, plugged it in. We've got a nice little display there showing how many volts, I guess, are going out or in. I don't even know. Let's pop something on charge and see what happens. Okay, we're charging. And it's just got a little display there that's showing me how many voltages. Oh, there you go, 9 volts. It's a bit overkill, but I guess you've got a few other options here with USB and USB-C charging. Okay, this is a really unusual device. It's quite industrial. I like the feel of it, though. It's shiny, plastic, rubber, little ring here. I actually quite like that. Not a bad start. Okay, this isn't that spooky at all. Cospet. Cospet, watch you want. Oh, the slogans have started strange already. This appears to be a smartwatch. That's massive. That is huge. You can put a SIM card in it, so obviously it's got some. Oh my lord. It's got a camera on it. The display doesn't look too bad either. It looks quite sharp. I don't know if you can tell. Kind of looks like it's misaligned slightly. I don't like that. Okay, here we are. We are up and going now. Well, actually, it's really quite snappy. It's not. It feels all right. I'm quite surprised. I mean, it's obviously updating everything at the moment, but how do I get the camera? Oh, yes. This is what I'm talking about. It's a picture of the spooky, spooky Halloween stuff. It's got a flash on it. <laughs> I actually kind of like this. Well, that was a bit of a surprise. Next up. Shh. 
sure I've had these before. Nice little headphone stand though with them. Hmm. In fact, I'm sure the headphone stand come with them last time as well. No, I was completely wrong. They were sent the A30s in that unboxing. These are the A70s. Now, since tested them out, and actually, they're pretty good. I'll give them a 7 out of 10. But this brings up another issue. Why do these companies keep on naming stuff the A7, the A3, the A5, A.164? Just memorable, stupid names. Call them something different. The One Audio Fusion, I can remember that. Next up, we have... Ooh, Tribe It! Ooh, what is that? Tribe It Home! Wireless home speaker sound that fills your room. I love Tribe It speakers. I've always said I love Tribe It speakers. There hasn't been one that has disappointed me. Genuinely. In fact, I use... As a lot of you probably already know right now, a few tribit speakers around the house. But the main one I use is the Stormbox, which was originally known as the Max Boom. Uh, but the standard Stormbox is incredible. I tried the Stormbox Pro very recently. That was also very, very good. A little bit bigger than the standard Stormbox, though. But this looks to me like it's some kind of home speaker with lights in. Okay, okay, bit of unusual design here. Right, we're paired up. Okay, so it would appear that, I don't really know. Let's, what does this do? Okay, we've got a light on, that's pretty cool. Uh, does it do, it does color, like a little rainbow color. That's kind of cool. It's got white noise. Seashore, white music, rain. Birds. And it's also got the Bluetooth speaker. Again, very, very good. I'm not so convinced on the design. I think it's a bit strange. And I don't know, does it have some sort of smart connectivity for the lights? No. I'm not sure on the design. And I think the lighting is a massive missed opportunity here by Tribit. That's a bit of a shame, but they've knocked it out of the park with the sound. I cannot fault that. Always a very good job with the sound. So well done, Tribit. Next, we've got a pretty small parcel here. That appears to be the cable with no form of packaging or information. What on earth? Okay, so it goes in, we've got USB-C, and on this end, we've got lightning, a 20 watt lightning, an 18 watt lightning, and a 100 watt USB-C. That's actually quite a cool idea. I like that. This does seem like quite a good idea, especially if you have, I don't know, a Mac and an iPhone, you want to charge it exactly the same time. You can plug that into your Mac charger and those into your iPhones. Oh, well, that's all right. That's pretty cool. Teeny tiny parcel now. Okay, we've got the O... No, sorry, QC... Okay, we've got the QCY Be Creative Go Beyond. Uh, this is all in Chinese. Okay, well, the case is like a pearlescent black. The headphones are also pearlescent black. Oh, that is new. Uh, these are not charged, though, so I'm going to have to put these on charge and come back to these. We've got something here with a, an image on it. It looks like a shaver. Of course, I won't be using that. Brio Scalp Mini. It seems like a scalp massager. Okay, okay. And so starts the really weird stuff. This is gonna be great. Oh, oh wow. Ow! That pinched my fingers, got that. <laughs> I hope that scared you. I'm not sure. Ah. Oh. oh my god. Oh, actually.
And yet another episode. You end up watching a middle-aged man massaging himself. Should start an only friends for this, shouldn't I? It's peculiar because it really does feel like someone's got a hand and they're doing like this on your head. My hair's probably a mess. Not that I've got much of it left anyway. I didn't think I'd say this, but surprisingly, it, this is really cool. This is really, really cool. Of all the massaging tech that I've ever reviewed or had on an unboxing, this is actually really different Kind of good. Not sure about the spikes though. I feel like that might rip my scalp out eventually. But I like it. Regardless of the fact it could eventually cause my hair to truly disappear completely. Right, so we're back on something a little bit more normal now. A pair of headphones. We've got the Sound Liberty P10 Pro. Now I've had some Sound Liberty stuff before that have been a bit of a real mix. Some of it has been good, some of it has been a bit not good. Okay, design is pretty good. Map finish, relatively nice box. Nothing too special there. We may already have charge. Let's have a listen. Very good, little bit quiet. I feel the volume is lacking slightly. Clarity is very good though, all across the board. I'd probably give these a solid seven out of 10. Not bad. This is Limareel, Lemarel, six in one, USB-C, multi-port, adapter. I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest, there's probably not a lot I can tell you about this, uh, other than it is a thing. I will get it out and I will tell you my opinion, however, on the Lemareel six in one, USB-C, multi-port, adapter, hub thing. Okay, opinions? Metal exterior, relatively nice, nice big logo there, not. Um, SD card, micro SD card, three USB 3, and we've got a HD port there. Disappointing there is no USB-C extension on there, however. Okay, not bad, I mean, if you're looking for a multi-port adapter, then this could be a good one for you. What is inside this one? Hao Quinn smartwatch. Hmm. Red and black. Interesting. Not a bad design. Not a bad design. A bit odd that it has the word smartwatch on it there. I find that a little bit intrusive. I mean, I know it's a bloody smartwatch. Why would I want it written on it to remind me that it's a smartwatch? Okay, turning it on. Display appears to be very sharp. Oh dear, it's a bit laggy though. Oh dear. Well, I thought we were gonna have a pretty good time here because the actual display itself comes across as quite sharp, but that is very, very, very laggy. Okay, we've got a bag now, a bag. Inside the bag is more bag. Inside this bag is even more bag. Inside this bag is a no burden, just joy. What does that even mean? Oh, peculiar. Okay, this is the Exa GT1 True Wireless Gaming Earbuds. Oh, this is different. So these are earbuds that are designed for gaming. Wow, they're just lit up. They've got like lights on the top and lights on the side of the box. Yeah. And that's very, very gamified, so we'll come back to that. Inside here we have a 3-in-1 wireless charger, foldable for your phone, your Apple Watch, and your AirPods. This looks very, very similar to the uh, Belkin ones, I believe. But if it's foldable, that makes it a hundred times better than the Belkin ones. Okay. That's kind of nifty. It would appear that it has a light on it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, 
yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's really simplistic, and it probably is a lot better than some of the other options out there that you can't take with you because they're absolutely, utterly massive. This is something that's quite simplistic, quite sleek, and I can get behind that. All right, so looks like we're about halfway through, so I just want to say a massive thanks to this month's sponsor. You've seen me talk about Surfshark before, and that's for good reason. It's a service I once didn't know about, but can no longer live without. Using Surfshark VPN, you can do all sorts of things, such as watch localized content when you aren't in the same region, which is handy if you're on holiday and want to watch some streaming services from back home. And if you're out and about, Surfshark can also ensure you stay safe whilst browsing the web on open Wi-Fi networks, keeping your privacy intact. But the killer reason that I continue to use it, however, is to stop greedy money-grabbing companies from hiking up the price of hotels, flights, and other stuff based on where you live. A practice I didn't know about until I started using Surfshark. These are just a few of the many things it can do, so head down to the description and download it using my link and you'll get a hefty discount, making it cost less than a pint in the pub. As well as that guys, I also want to say a massive thanks to my new patrons. And this month there's only been one new patron since I did the last filming, and that is Bedonicus. It's quite a cool name. But anyway, thank you to Bedonicus for joining the Patreon Club this month. And also thank you to all of you guys who are my current patrons. I know, I know, I know I say it every single month, but you guys make Stu's Reviews what it is today. I cannot thank you enough for all of the support. You have no idea how helpful it is and it allows me to do weirder fun things like this halloween themed episode as well so if you do want to support Stu's reviews over on patreon you can do by clicking the links in the description below and by joining you'll also get access to what i call the car boot auction where i auction off some of the Stu's reviews inventory really really cheap in a blind bidding war between all of my current patrons and it means you can get access to some tech super super cheap now this is what's going in the car boot auction this month a vixing bh486a projector a mazefit gts2 in midnight black pamu quiet mini earphones the airjoy pro 7.1 surround sound gaming headset imowu bullet 2e security camera and the peculiar but incredible sounding Abramtech E600 speaker. Carbon auction starts today, guys, and bidding will last for one week. Last month, we had some amazing stuff. We had the Braun LE02, which is a £750 speaker, go for just £250. So that was an utter bargain, whoever won that. So if you want to join into the car boot auction, guys, make sure you head to the description below and there's a little video that will explain a little bit more about it. But join us over on Patreon for that. But other than that, let's crack on with the next parcel. A pen. A pen that appears to be a camera. So we've got a watch camera and now we've got a pen camera. Where the Hell is the camera? Oh, look! It's in the end, that's cool. I think it might be recording now. How do I stop it recording? Where do I put the memory card? Ah. It's got the memory card inside here. Ah. God knows what the actual quality of that is like, but could that be useful? Hmm. A lot of nefarious people use stuff like this. What is that? Abode! Oh, I know what this is. This is the abode. Oh, okay, right. So it's a bunch of abode stuff. Basically, it's a smart home protection. That is simply what it is. We've got all sorts of stuff here. We've got camera it would appear to be we've got water leak sensor here that looks like it could be and no idea what that is but i'm going to go open it let's have a look let's find out what this is i'm not going to get this going now because i do intend to do a review of the abode stuff actually saying that 
I've always intended to. It's been out for a while. Okay, so in here, it looks like we've got motion sensors, we've got door sensors, we've got the big base station. Not massively keen on base stations, as you know already. You know, I've made comment on stuff like that before. Everything needs a bloody base station. I mean, soon my shoes are going to need a base station. But all things aside, I'm still quite excited to test these out. By the way, the battery on the ZV-1 is atrocious. I'm going to put it on charge. I love the ZV-1, but it comes with all sorts of horrible, stupid issues. Right, let us speed on. Going to have to deal without a top camera for the moment. Stupid yellow tape. The Ulephone Armour 12 5G. I think I've seen some of the Ulephone Armour stuff before. And it's been pretty cool. Oh, wow, look at this thing. This thing is... Ooh, look at this. Uh, IP69K proof. What the hell is K? I've never heard of K. Well, what does that even mean? This seems like an utter beefy boy. Uh, it's a very unusual design. It's got like these kind of plasticky bits on the bottom. USB-C, that's a slight benefit there. Uh, appears very, very rugged. Let's turn it on. Okay, well display is nice and sharp. Well, do you know, it's actually not that bad. It feels quite snappy. It looks pretty good. The screen is good quality. The camera is not the worst. The model isn't particularly good. But overall, this looks like a really nice little phone. It's definitely, definitely more suited to people who work in industries where you are going to destroy your phone. Got a parcel here, marked DT number one. Okay, this looks actually pretty bloody cool. Well, apparently it comes separate. We've got gold, I love gold, you know I love gold. No charge there, so I'm have to put this in charge and we'll come back to this. Oh dear, the charging is very finicky. There's no like a lining module or anything like that. Hmm. It does seem though like uh, DT number one have up their game a bit. I seem quite perfect. Ooh! Hey, they really do seem to have kind of up their game a little bit. These seem really nice. We've got life. It's not an OLED display. Hmm. It's not an OLED display. Uh, software is a little bit poor. Some of it I kind of like, some of it I don't. The design is nice, but I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of the software. Just using it now, it just feels a little bit on the laggy side. I've used much, much worse. Overall, not too bad. Hmm. Well, let's wait for the other one to start up and we'll have a look and see how that goes. Next up, we've got an Amazon parcel. Mmm, something bizarre. Looks like some kind of mega adapter. But it is some mega adapter. You've got eight plugs on there, eight plugs, four USB, and we've got on and off switches there at the top that would appear that you can turn off banks of them at a time. That one will do those for, that one does that for, I'd assume. Bit of an odd thing to send. Bit of an odd thing indeed. If it had some form of smart functionality, we'd be having a different conversation now, but on the surface, it doesn't appear like it does. Let's have a look inside this one here. That. Oh, cool! So what we've got here is the BenQ Light Bar Plus, or Screen Bar Plus, whatever they decided to call it. I use a BenQ Light Bar at the moment on top of my monitor, as some of you guys know from the desk setup video tour that I did earlier on in the year. This is very, very similar, but it does have something quite cool. With mine, it's got the controls along the top of it, which is fine, but you're tapping the top of the bar every single time you want to use it. This has a full control system that can sit on your desk, and you've got this kind of twisty knob like this. I've seen these already. These are really cool. I can't believe they sent me one. There is another parcel from BenQ, though. Hold on a minute. 
GS50 LED digital projector. Okay, so this is the BenQ Trevolo. I don't know, I don't know what they've called on this, the GS50, but they've got all sorts of weird markings on the side. However, the design of this looks incredible. What are the specs? Full HD, 1080p, 2.1 sound. Mm, 2.1, okay, that's interesting. Don't see that very often. It's water splash proof as well. USB-C. So then, I guess this is really designed so that you can take it out and about, but it's obviously a slightly bigger version of some of the smaller things like the uh, Anchor capsule series that I tested out. This will be really interesting to take a look. Let's open the bag. This is nice, really nice presentation. Well, that is much smaller than I thought it was going to be. I really like the design of this. It's got this kind of like little leather hook carrying bit. I don't know. I don't know what that is. How would you even describe that? It feels like a really weighty little product. The thing on the side that pops open, we've got all the connectors inside there. Well, this looks interesting. Let's turn it on and have a look at the quality. Well, what can I say? The sound is phenomenal from this and actually it has some incredible hidden little features that I discovered when testing it. So stay tuned for a full review on this one because the hidden features are really cool. But the quality overall is pretty good. So there we go, that is the first projector from BenQ that I've actually tried. And quite an interesting one at that. Only a few parcels left now. We've got something here that's got the word light med on it, or something like that. Light med, I don't even know. Cirrhosis Mini 3 CES Insomnia Relief Devices. Adopts cranial electrotherapy stimulation, generating microcurrent of biphasic pulse combination waveform, and uses microcurrent to stimulate the brain, changing the abnormal brain waves in the brain. Non invasive. What the hell? So, I think the whole idea of this is that it stimulates your brain with small electric waves. And this just looks crazy. This, I think, plugs into the device. And then. Am I really about to electrocute myself on camera for the amusement of viewers? It does feel potentially like there's little electric shocks going through. I don't know if that is in my mind. No, I can definitely feel something. Well, okay, I don't know if if this will cure insomnia or not. I have no idea. That is a slightly unusual device. Now, I don't really have insomnia, so I might have to give that to someone else to try. It kind of reminds me of going back to like the 1940s and all the weird electrotherapy that was supposed to help people then. Hmm. What is that? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I recognise this logo. This is from the projector company that sent me the projector last month. The really awesome projector that won the unboxing. Is this a PC? This looks like a mini PC. <gasps> Have I been sent a mini PC? What's that? What? A that's a folding keyboard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is the smallest of mice I have ever seen. And it comes on a 
on a... That is cool. Hey, I like that. With the projector and the PC together, it makes it like a little travel kit. Oh, I'm gonna have to get these together and have a quick peek and see what it's like. In all honesty, it is a bit crazy. I mean, this is a tiny PC and a tiny projector made to work together. It's all a bit strange and I'm not sure why you'd choose to take these instead of a laptop, but it is cool and it works remarkably well. I'm not gonna show you everything about it because I probably do intend to do a full review on this one, but for now all I can say is I've been pleasantly surprised. We're on to the final parcel now before we test the headphones out. No idea what that is. What is this? No, it would appear to be a sound bar. Uh -huh. The weirdest thing here is that it has no branding whatsoever. Nothing. Nothing on here. It even just says the word sound bar on the bottom. There's nothing on the box. How peculiar. Lying mode. It's lying mode. Optic mode. Coaxial mode. Bluetooth mode. It does have Bluetooth. Very strange audio recordings there. It's playing automatically. kind of expected that to not be that good and I was correct it wasn't that good I think guys that is it so let us go back and we'll have a quick peek at this let's have a look at this smart watch here I know it's only the actual watch bit no and actually the screen looks terrible from what it's showing me on there okay we're gonna skip that so before I tell you my favorite items this month, let's listen to the headphones that we've been given. We've got the QCY. Okay, yeah, really good. If you like bass, these are very, very bassy. Very surprised. They're actually really, really good. I would say they're a little bit lacking in the mids and high clarity, but the bass is very phenomenal. So these are the Exa GT1s. Okay, a little bit more even, I would say, than the other ones we just tried. I wouldn't say they're particularly special. Let me try some gun sounds though, to see what it might sound like if I was playing something like Warzone. I would say these have a very even sound across the board. That's kind of what you want if you're gaming. You want to do a good job of earphones. You don't want something overpowered. Uh, because let's say you're listening to something with loads and loads of bass, then it's going to overpower things like the highs, such as footsteps, in games like Warzone, so you're not going to be able to hear them. So actually, I think these are pretty good for what they are. But that is it. That is all of the items that I've been sent this month. They're a little bit smaller than last month, and that's because I've renewed the cycle, so you should be watching this on October the 1st or there or thereabouts. But in third place, in third place, I am going to give it two. The Brio Scalp Massager. I didn't think I'd be giving third place to this, but that's a really cool, strangely innovative design massager that I've never tried before. So I like that. That gets third place. In second place, I'm of course gonna have to give it to the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. I love mine so much, I think it's absolutely incredible. So this will always win a place on the top table of awesome gadgets. And the fact it's got a cool little control panel that some might like, some might not. I just think it's really, really cool. But in first place, the award that you've all been waiting for, and this has been so difficult to award this month, but I'm afraid it's gonna be another projector like last month. 
And the second BenQ item on this top three this time, but then again, BenQ do make some fantastic products and stuff that I personally use. And I know a lot of creators and other friends use BenQ devices as well, but they tend to be pretty good. And this time they've obviously knocked it out of the park with both. I think this is cool. I like the design of it. The quality is pretty good as well. This is awesome. This is awesome. And these are my top three items for this month. If you want to check out any of the items that you've seen today, I will leave links in the description below alongside the time code you can check them out for. So go and check them out for yourselves. And like I said, if you want to join this month's car boot auction and get your hands on some of the tech really, really cheap this month, and you have to be a patron, make sure you join within the next few days over at the links below as well. But other than that, guys, let me know what your favorite item was this month, and I will see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.